hi folks this is Anurag Sidana and this is my second video on flowable engine so in the last video we covered what is flowable engine uh, and how to set it up for spring boot in java and how to deploy the flowable process and all so in this video we'll be covering the next part of it that how a, how a, an employee can apply for a holiday and how a manager can get get a list of holidays and approve one of those and uh, etc so yeah let's get started now let's go to the second functionality we'll make an api by using which a user can apply for the holiday so this is our first user task we have defined the first user task here so after starting the flow comes here user task so we'll define an api in which a user can apply for the holiday so we'll go here and we'll define a dto called holiday request and i'll just go here and copy paste so i will tell you the data annotation what what it does is it's generally a, uh, a it, it basically adds scatter setter and required argument constructor so you no need to write the bilateral code for it and also in this holiday request we have three fields one is the employee name second is the number of holidays and third is the request description now after that in, in our controller we'll define a separate api i'll go here uh, i'll use this api so i'll so this is the second DTO I think we are using process instance response in this DTO basically we'll be returning the process ID of the process which gets created while uh, via this API so I'll just copy paste this DTO also So here what Android value does is, is basically make this class variables final so that no one can change it and also it adds uh, like uh, some constructor and getter and setters also. Now we'll come here. So we need to import this stuff. Holiday request also we need to import. Now apply, we need to define a method in holiday service called apply holiday. We'll go here and I'll just copy paste this code. So we need to import this, this, yeah, now it's working. So what this apply holiday is doing is this just make a map of string and object. So this is basically the data, <coughs> sorry. So this is the basically the data we'll be storing with the process instance. We name it, we call it process variables. So these process variables we can access in different uh, stages of the process means if a different tasks of the process and also a uh, BPM and file can also access these variables now here we just made a map of the uh, string and object here we put employee in employee variable we put the employee name number of holidays and then description now using runtime service so here is the runtime service so we not need not to we no need to initialize the runtime service because Spring Boot initializes it at uh, runtime. Now, using runtime service or start process instance by key, we and passing the variables, we'll be making a new process instance. Now, you need to make sure that this process definition key, this should be same as this holiday request process ID, so that our flowable API can pick this. I pick the process definition from this file now after that we hit the start process instance by key and it's get created and after that we are just making a process instance response in which we, we are passing the process instance id and also whether it's ended or not so let's run the app and test this out now our app has been uh, like up now we'll go to I'll go to the postman and I have already made this 
collection so here this is our endpoint holiday slash apply and employee name is employee name number of holiday is two and request description is some dummy description i'll hit this api and sorry so yeah you need to make sure that every time you uh, your instance is up you need to deploy the engine because the h2 is in memory db and every time we restart the app the db flush is up and everything gets deleted so first of all let's deploy the process definition now we'll go here we can see that process is get uh, process got deployed and this is the process id now if we'll go to our ppmn file so here We'll see that after this user task sequence goes to approval task okay so now it goes to decision so decision needs to be made by this whether the holiday is approved or not so if you'll see there's one more uh, there's one more field we are defined here called candidate groups so we are defined it as managers so if we want to fetch the all the request uh, which has come to a manager for approval of the holiday we can use this candidate groups manager so i'll tell you how can we use this so we'll make one more api uh, in which uh, if we hit that api we can get all the holiday requests assigned to the managers candidate group so i'll go to this holiday controller and we'll make one more API. So this basically gives all the tasks assigned to the manager. Okay, now we need to also make this start task details DTO. If I'll go here, this is the task detail DTO. I'll just copy paste it. And I'll define it here. So this is the DTO, the same annotations I have used. So in this task detail, we'll basically return in the task ID, task name, and the task data which we passed uh, while applying for the holiday. I'll again go to holiday controller. I'll just import this. Then I'll go to holiday service, and I'll write down the method. So this is our method. So I'll import this. There's one more util method we have made here. So because it's being used at multiple places. So here, if you'll see get what get manager task is doing, it's basically call this task service. So this all again, uh, maybe we need not to initialize it and using this task service we need to make a query and in this query we'll specify that for that candidate group we name it as, named it as manager right in that bpmn file so we should use it managers only and then after that we make a query that for this candidate group fetch all fetch, fetch the list of tasks so it will give us the list of tasks and after that we are uh, converting this list of tasks to task details or dto and then we are returning it okay so this is also ready so let's deploy this so our application is uh, running so first uh, one more thing i need to make a correction i think so this survey this apply holiday so this is not a user task i think i uh, earlier told that it's a user task it's basically the start of the process so at the start of the process we are uh, starting a holiday request and after that the first user task is for the manager whether manager uh, approves or rejects the holiday so first let's see the task details so whatever ta whatever process has been created so it will give it the list of the uh, tasks here using this method so let's test it out so we, we are getting here all the tasks assigned to the manager okay so it's zero currently as there are no tasks assigned. So first we need to deploy the engine again. And again, apply for the holiday. 
let's say two uh, holiday requests are there then if we'll see so we can see that there are two holiday requests for the manager now the first user task is a user uh, whether a manager uh, approves the holiday request or rejects the holiday request so let's do the implementation for that so we'll go here in controller i'll define one more method so this is the method So I'll go to my service, I'll just copy paste this method. So yeah, what this method is doing is, is it will just make a uh, like a map of data variables, process variables, then in variables it will put approved as true. And, and for a user task to go into completion, we need to explicitly call this method task service stores complete with the task id and variables so how will it work is how will it go to the next state so it will go to the bpmn file so here in code we are setting the here in code we are setting the approved flag to true so if we'll go into the bpmn file if you'll we'll, you'll see so based on approved flag so this is the user task which, which we are writing the code so here based on the approved flag this exclusive gateway decides to which states to go which state to go so and as i told you the process variable can be accessed at runtime via the bpmn file and the other states so that's why it's able to access by using this controller kind of syntax so now let's run the application again so our application is running so let's go and test it again we need to deploy and apply for the holiday then get all tasks for the manager okay then use this task id to approve the holiday so okay in body we see that couldn't couldn't instantiate class holiday approval handle okay so i think we missed defining the handler so in bpmn file we have defined that if approved is true it should go to external system call and an external system call should trigger this holiday approval handler but it's not defined so that's why we need to define our approval handler also just copy pasting this so here this is the holiday approval handler and it should implement java delegate so that it can work as a system task service task basically so so a service task should uh, should trigger a class and after that is class to work as a service task it should implement this java delegate and it should override its execute method currently we are not doing anything here so let's run it again so our application is up one more correction i made was just corrected this package structure here so now we'll test it deploy it again apply for the holiday get all tasks so oh, it's working as expected now we'll go here now we see that uh, we see that it, we got 200 so means it was approved and approval was successful now if we'll go here so after the approval successful it should have gone to this approval handler and we should have printed approved sending an email so we can see that it worked and it sent it here and it printed approved sending an email yeah folks so this is it with this video so in next video we'll be covering how like how we can see the list of holiday requests corresponding to a user and how a complete process goes through various state during the life cycle of a process we have defined in the process definition so that's it if you like the video like my 
uh, video and subscribe to my channel see ya